welcome to uh, this lecture in today's class we are going to talk about test bench writing in Veridoc. Last four classes we talked about the various aspects of uh, Veridoc language and how to design a system using Veridoc. But when you design a Veri uh, system there may be some bug you have introduced and it may be because of the logical bug you may have some logical error in your implementation or maybe because of some interconnection issues you probably connected a wrong wire to wrong places right or you may not be controlling the reset properly and there may be some bug right. To identify if there is a bug in your design what you have to do you need to test your design right that means you have to simulate your design. What is that? So, you have to effectively run your design with various test cases and you have to check what is the output coming from your implementation and is that matching with the golden reference? What is the golden reference? What is the actual correct output? You already know that if I give this input that should be the correct output and what is I am obtaining from the design. If they are matching for a significant number of test cases then we will say my design is correct. There are many way you can control the, the test cases so that you try to cover all possible path of your design, all possible control logic of the design and so on. But I am not going into that but how to write the test bench that will cover all the design aspect, but how to write this overall test bench that I am going to discuss in today's class. So, as I mentioned uh, once you implement this, so you have this with you, this is your design under test ok DUT. So, this is the implementation for example, that uh, design that I have developed in the previous class uh, uh, is the design, it may be a multiplexer, it may be adder, it may be anything right. So, now this uh, design under test with you using some way you identify the test vectors, you identify what are the input on which you want to test it. You give this input to this, it will run, it will give you the output and you know that if you give this test vector what is the correct output, right? this is the correct output and this is the output from the implementation, implementation right? and then you just compare whether they are equal or not. If for all test cases this is passes, you will say yes, I am confident my implementation is working fine. If not, we will say there are some bug and you have to fix and redo the whole process, right. So, now I will talk about how to write this uh, overall framework, right. So, that is what is called test bank writing, right. So, this is your design under test, the implementation that you have done. So, you have to done everything in Verilog, right. So, Verilog language has to support this whole process. So, what you have to do, you should have a text generator or monitor module. So, this is a top level module, there is a module and it has that uh, that is your design right and you have to define another module that will actually give you this test bench or the test inputs uh, to this uh, design and it will get the output, it will monitor and report and this entire things this is one module right, this is one module, this is also a module there may be hierarchy inside, but there will be a top level module, there will be also the test bench is also kind of uh, test generator is also module and in the test bench you have to instantiate both the module right, the test generator as well as the design under test and that will be your overall thing. So, it is like you are now running your design, you are giving inputs and you are getting the outputs and your test bench is a basically another Verilog file or it is a module which will have instantiation of this design under test as well as the test generator module and it, they are interacting each other and just monitor running for a set of test case and there will be a finish after some time. Okay. But this Verilog has to support all, all of them. So, uh, once I make these connections as I mentioned that you have this test bench module where you have this child module is basically your uh, design under test okay. and say this is coming from the test generator. Okay. So, now once you connect how to instantiate this module that I have already discussed, but just to recap uh, once you have this parent module, so you have this child module first, here you specify this is the child module and the it has uh, signal A, B, C, D where you are saying this A and B is the input. So, this input is coming here and output is C and D right, signal C, signal D right. So, now you just define this and you have the definition uh, all the descriptions I am just keeping here. So, once you instantiate this child module from this parent module, parent module is the your test bench uh, you are and you want to connect this wire uh, G 
right the bit different bits of the ORG which is a 5 bit uh, uh, 5 bit uh, wire, but I want to connect the 4 bit of them into this. Okay. So, what I am going to do is uh, so if you just write this way, so you define this this is the module name child module and then you give the instance name G1. So, I just say this is my G1 instantiation and if you connect this if you just specify in this order then this, this this will be connected to the this will be connected to B, this will be connected to C, this will be connected to D right this is how it will work. So, now uh, so do you have to maintain the order. So, here the order is very important right if you do not specify anything if you just put it here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 then 1 will be connected to A, 2 will be connected to B, C will be connected to D and so on whereas, if you put 3, 1, 0, 2 then 3 will be connected to A and so on. So, if you do not specify anything if you just give the connections name you need to be very careful about the order. On the other hand if you uh, connect like this the same child module you have and now this is the parent module where I am instance setting the child module. But if I use this signal name right the what is the input sig a sig b. So, if I use dot sig c dot sig a dot sig b dot d then I can give them in any order it does not matter. So, in this case order does not matter right. So, and this is the recommended style. So, because there may be some module which has many ports right. So, just because of the you forget the order or making some mis, uh, uh, mistake there uh, your interconnection is wrong right your may be sum is going to carry carry is going to sum right because of some uh, because of such problem. So, it is a recommended that you always use the signal name input signal name dot signal name and the wire that you are connecting right. So, if you do a dot 6 c z 0 that means z 0 is getting connected to signal c dot c a 3 means 3 is connecting to signal a and so on this is how it can be input or output. So, but this is something is the recommended side you should connect this way. So, now if you try to understand that uh, when you try to simulate your design what you are effectively trying to do you want to give one input and your design will take some time to get the generate the output right. If it is a combinational circuit it is the delay of the design uh, there is no clock there, but it is the kind of delay of your design. But if it is a sequential design if you know that if you give an input and it takes 4 clock to get your output you have to wait for 4 clocks right and then you should give the next input right and something like this. So, effectively when you uh, write this test bench here is nothing but you have to give input wait for sufficient time so that you get the output then you give the next input and you process this iteratively right. So, you need to use the delay uh, that things I have talked about in the test bench. Remember when you uh, uh, generate this this will go into the physically be implemented this is just to test it right. So, this is not going to synthesized into hardware this will be synthesized into hardware. So, I can utilize this uh, delay in the test bench generation module because this is not synthesizable construct, but I, I want I do not want to synthesize that module as well I just want to use it for testing. So, the basic idea that we have to use the delay has some delay value right that I have already uh, explained in my previous classes, but I will just recap this. So, in the delay I have two type of way you can do this this is called inter assignment delay. So, where if you give hash 10 then you are writing this that means if you are in this time test time stamp 0 after 10 unit of time you are going to execute this operation right. So, this is what I have just mentioned here if you write has a b. So, you will wait for 5 unit of time then this a equal to b is going to happen and if you put this value here that means this assignment if you write this what is going to happen your uh, value of b will store in a temporary variable then you will wait for 5 unit of time then this temp will be assigned this. So, in between your a can get change right that is the idea here you are waiting and then you are getting this. So, at this point whatever the value of a that will go to a, but here you take the old value the current value of a and that I am going to assign and after 5 unit of time ok. So, that is the difference, but we usually prefer this one ok. So, now I will take a uh, example of uh, a combinational design first and I will explain how to write the test bench for this. Suppose your design under test module is a AND gate right simply it has input 1 and input 2 and it is doing AND of this right very simple design 
and output is out right this is your design under test right this is your design under test this is just an get okay and now i want to just see this and get is working as it is right as expected so i have to write this test module now so test module i just define here so you just say sorry here in the test module what i have to do i have to now give two inputs to this module so i am just creating two output right because whatever the input of this module will be the output of this test bench right you have to remember that so what i am doing because this I in one and input is the input of this, so I am just creating in one and into is the output of this module. It can have a different name, name does not matter, I am just giving the same name so that you can easily correlate them. And whatever the output of this module, duty module, that will be the input of this test bench. So, it is just the reverse, right? Here in the duty is input is in one and into, so that is the output of this module and its output is out and that is the input of this module right it will be just the reverse you have to be remember that then only you can pass the value and read the value from that right otherwise there will be some inconsistencies and then what i am doing here in a initial block in initial block i am giving so initially i am just giving the value in 1 and 2 is 0 0 right so this 0 0 value will go through this port to this design and then it will check 0 and 0 and output will be 0. So, that value will come back to this out value into this test module right. Then I am waiting 10 unit of time. See AND gate is very simple, but it can be a very complex logic right. It, it you need some time to execute that. So, you need some uh, time of time. So, you just also give sufficient time so that this output gets stabilized. Uh, so, that the, the time needed to compute add we are waiting for that time right. So, that is why I cannot just give immediately. Then I am giving the value 0 1, then after 10 unit of time I am giving 1 0, then after 10 unit of time I am giving 1 1 and after 10 unit I say okay, finish, I do not want to check because in this has only 4 possible values I am checking for all scenarios. So, definitely in all cases if your output is correct that means your AND gate is properly implemented right. And how to check this? So, you can use this system called monitor. In the monitor you can actually monitor any of the signals right in 1 in 2. Uh, and these are the signal of corresponding to this module right. Then out, so you are monitoring them uh, using monitor signal. So, it will print whenever any of the value changes ok. So, that is how this monitor works, any of the value changes it will just print it for your convention. If you just do this you will get the output like this, in 0th clock you are giving 0 0 output will be 0, if it is in after 10 unit of time you are giving 0 1 your output will be 0 after 10 units of time. So, that means, at 20th you are giving 1 0 output will be 0 and at 30th you are giving 1 1 your output will be 1. So, you are confident that your AND gate is working as per your expectation or, or your objective right. So, I have not defined this the overall test bench. So, in the test bench as I mentioned you have to instantiate this module and this module. So, this is what I have done in the test bench I just define DUT this is the DUT module this is the test module, this is the test module. So, duty is this, test is this and I just instantiate them and I just make a connection properly. I am giving this w1, w2, w3 exactly the way I want and I make the connections. Basically what you are happening, you are effectively running this module test bench. When you are doing this, it will create a copy of this duty, it will create a copy of the test bench and it will execute and the execution is like this your test bench is getting giving feeding some input, DUT is running uh, based on the input and giving the output and then you are just printing them and later you can monitor and cross check whether these outputs are same or not ok. Now, let us just discuss there are many directives and system tasks that you can utilize during testing. One is uh, the define which will just a text macro include you can include multiple files because most of the time your design may be defined over multiple files. So, you can just include all the files here. Time is uh, to mention the uh, current simulation time it will just return you the current simulation time. Monitor it will just continuously monitor the values that you are monitoring and it will print whenever the value changes right. It will just any of the value changes it will print them and then finish is the terminate the simulation ok. If you do not this it will go on right you must have a finish at the end 
and everything we are writing in an initial block okay, because I want to execute everything only once. So, there is one, so one thing is that I am saying 10 unit of time, but what is the time value? So, that you can use using the time scale and usually we do it time scale 1 nanosecond and 100 ps is the precision right, what is the precision of time you can measure. So, it means that if it is you are giving 10 has 10 that means 10 nanosecond. If your, uh, your time scale is 10 nanosecond and if you are giving has 10 it means 100 nanosecond right, but usually we use uh, 1 nanosecond and 100 ps and that this is a precision it will be rounded to that value right. So, for example, if you mention that time scale is 10 nanosecond and your precision is also 10 nanosecond and if you give 1.5, so that 1.5 into 10 means 15 nanosecond, but if your precision is 10 nanosecond, so it will be rounded to 20 nanosecond. Okay, the next one. So, uh, so far we discuss uh, the combinational circuit and they are testing, but in general your design will have also uh, sequential element and those sequential element will be controlled by the con uh, a clock. So, now once you try to test a design which have sequential element along with this test vector generator you should have a clock generator module as well right and this clock will go both places because in the test vector generator also you might have some register where you want to store certain things and that same clock will go to the clocks uh, the registers of the duty. Okay and the in interaction between this duty and the test vector generator as per the previous definition. Okay. So, how to generate clock that I have given an example in previous class just to recap that. So, you can just say key initially clock equal to 0 and always some clock period uh, duty cycle you say clock equal to not clock right this is the easiest way to do it that means it will generate a clock like this because the clock value will uh, become 1 to 0 after every 10 unit of time and this is basically 10 right this is 10 this is 10 this is 10. So, this is 1 value this is 0 value this is 0 this is 1 value this is 0 1 0 1 0 and so on right. So, <coughs> this is how you can do there are many other way where you can actually parameterize instead of uh, 10 you can just use a clock period and clock period is basically the overall this is the one clock period and you can say half of the time I will just maintain 1 and half of the time 0. So, I am just going to flip the value every half of the clock period right. Here you can make this 5 to 10 to 50 just by changing this value right. This is also just the generic version of this. You can also do using this always statement where you are doing is you are writing clock equal to 0. So, your clock is 0 then after 10 unit of time you make it 1. So, this is 10 unit of time. Then again after 10 unit of time you are going back and since it is always block it is going to always happen right. Again it is also generating a clock like this right. So, you can use any of them and many time here it is uh, 50 percent duty cycle means what in a one clock period 50 percent of the time it is 1 and 50 percent time it is 0 right. This is the duty cycle, but if you want to generate a clock where you want to make this is like this. So, that means this is one clock, but I want to make this is a 60 percent and this is a 40 percent that is also possible it is pretty easy right. So, what I just do here is your clock period is 10 right and the duty cycle is 60 percent. So, what I am doing here the high value will be 60 percent of the clock period and rest of the time it is low right you can just see clock period into duty cycle by 100. So, it is basically 0.6 of clock period which is 6 and it is clock period minus the uh, high duty cycle. So, 10 minus 6 it is 4 right and uh, here what I am doing here initially clock is 0 and then I just wait for 40 4, 4 unit of time then I will make it 1 then I will wait for 6 unit of time then I will make it 0 and this will repeat. Right. So, then now the clock will be like this. Some cases uh, this uh, duty cycle is important. Uh, so, you may generate such clock as well. So, now I will take an example of FIFO first in first out buffer and uh, I will explain how to write test bench for uh, sequential design with the example of FIFO. 
uh, I hope everybody knows what is FIFO. So, uh, it is first in first out. So, you can think about you have some storage locations okay, and data will come through this will go out from this right. So, it is first in first out means whatever the data you are writing there first that will go out. So, if you just put say A here and then if you read A will come here right then if you put B here then B will come right. So, if you write A B C and you are reading so first A will come then B then C right. So, you have kind of need two pointers one is the read pointer. So, exactly which location you are going to write next and exactly which location you are going to read next. So, there will be two such pointers okay. and once you declare this is array right basically this is array and each location can have multiple bit right. So, it is basically you have a FIFO size and the FIFO width. Okay. So, uh, let me just define it quickly. So, the module FIFO I just assume that the width each each location has 8 bit data and the FIFO depth is 32 bit right. And what are the signals are there? Uh, once you have this FIFO if you see here you have a write enable if it is 1 then only I am going to write some data here. There is a read enable right whenever it is 1 then I am going to reading the data from this FIFO and there is a clock and reset and there is a data in and data out and there are two more signal for synchronization. If it is full you can write it, it only write if the FIFO is not full right that means it has say 32 locations and you have already written 32 data then you cannot write further right. Similarly, empty means if there is no data there you cannot read it from there. So, in general this FIFO is circular right because if you just keep writing here, so right here so probably you are start writing from here, here and this way. So, one time will come here right and then you are still reading from this location right and say suppose you have written all of them and you also re start reading from this location. So, these are getting empty right. So, once you reach here you should come back to this location and again start writing if this place is empty. So, those those that is called circular FIFO, but in today's class I am taking a implementation where it is just a not circular it is a linear one. So, you, you can read on maximum you can write 32 elements and then you have to stop ok. So, here I just define I have the input which is data in which is 8 bit 0 to 7 you have the write enable, read enable, clock and reset right. On the output side you have a data out and you have full and empty two signals. Here I am uh, defining the memory as I mentioned you have the data width uh, which is 8 bit and this is the array right. So, effectively you have kind of each bit is 8 bit and you have 32 such location right, right which is depend on the FIFO depth and my example I have taken 32 so as I am just declaring explaining with 32. So, this is my I am declaring the storage right and then you have uh, this pointer uh, which is again read pointer write pointer is basically pointing to this location means if you try to write now it will write here and read pointer if it is pointing to this location if you try to read it will read this location and once it is read you go to the next location right and there is a depth count it will say how many elements are there now in the FIFO ok. So, let me just uh, define this. So, the operation uh, called push and pop ok push means you are writing to the FIFO and pop is reading from the FIFO. So, now uh, writing as I mentioned, so every passage of clock if you want to reset the content you just make your write pointer equal to 0 right. So, you have this location right say so you have this location 0 to 31 you just say whenever you want to reset you bring your write pointer here right this is your write pointer. Otherwise, if you have the write enable signal and your FIFO is not full then what I am going to do whatever the data in is there I am going to write in the right location. So, suppose your data in is 5 you are writing here and your right pointer move to the next location ok. So, now your right pointer will move to the next location ok. So, you have to initialize this uh, right enable to right pointer to 0 ok because you are starting from that location. 
on the pop what I am doing here. So, again if it is reset you will make the read, uh, read pointer 0 otherwise if you want to read an available is 1 that means you want to read something and your FIFO is not empty you will read the current memory location which is pointed by read pointer ok. Say suppose this is your read pointer and you have already written one element you want to now read it. So, it will return you 5 and then this will move to the next location ok. So, this is how it will work and you are increasing the pointer to the next location ok. As I mentioned there is a depth count that will keep how many elements are there. So, if you want to reset FIFO it will become 0 otherwise when you write when you are writing effectively your depth count increasing by 1 right and we are reading an element. So, if you are re read an available is 1 and not empty you are reading an element depth count is reading by getting reduced by 1 ok. So, and then you have this two signal empty and full right you are saying that your depth count is 0 that means there is no element right then it is empty right otherwise it is 0 means it is not empty. On the other hand if your full is your depth count is equal to equal to uh, the size of the FIFO then I will say it is full right otherwise I will say 0. So, this is how I will just uh, came to know whether we have elements in the FIFO or not ok. I hope uh, you understand the basic implementation. So, now coming back to the test bench so I have already defined my FIFO ok. Now I have to write the test bench module which whatever the input to this duty uh, that will be the output right. So, there will be a reset output, write enable output, read enable output uh, and data out output right. These are the output of this FIFO and whatever the output of this module that means full, empty and data in this will be the input of this module ok. And there will be a clock generator because there are clocks everything is in process of clock right. So, here I have instantiated uh, these two module. So, suppose you, you can actually now understand how to write this test bench. So, you have to make these are output and this is inputs and after certain unit of time you have to change the value. Suppose you want to read or write you give the signal of either some arbitrary write or read whether if you want to write something you give write an available one, if you want to read something you give read an available one and you, if you want to write something you give this data out equal to some value right and then you see and then so, whenever you are going to read something you will get the output and you check whether you are coming exactly uh, the expected order right. So, I am not writing the detail of the uh, test FIFO, uh, but I am just defining the overall test bench ok. So, in the test bench what I am doing I am in instantiating my FIFO module, I am instantiating my test bench module and I am instantiating the clock generator module ok and I am just making the connection exactly the way I want the way I explain ok. So, once you have you run this and then you will you can actually uh, monitor the waveforms right any uh, commercial uh, uh, simulator tool it will show you the waveform ok. So, if you see here this is my uh, I am all the signal like the memory which is the FIFO the data out data in ok and the read enable uh, whether it is empty full everything I am monitoring here right and the write enable everything I am monitoring here and this is my clock. So, the clock is going like this and then you are not resetting anything right. So, suppose you your initially your uh, FIFO is empty and you keep your in a write enable on right and you are giving the data like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, sorry 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on. Then uh, you are giving this and you are making your write enable on right not the read enable and initially you see your empty is 1 full is 0 and then after whenever you write one element your empty also becomes 0. So, that means you it is neither empty not full right you can read or write both. So, initially your memory has all z x value right and then once you give this one immediately when this next clock come this will update right and your content of the 0th location is now 1 this is holding 1 now. When you are giving 2 whenever the next positive clock come at this point this will now storing the next location because initially your write pointer was 0 
then it will move to 1. So, it is going to write this 2 into the next location and so on right. So, then 4 comes whenever the next positive clock comes immediately this will store 4 right. So, this way your uh, FIFO getting full with the elements right and if you assume your uh, FIFO size is uh, 8 then after uh, 8 when all the data are full you basically see a full equal to 1 right because in this simulation I have considered my FIFO size is 8 ok. So, then you can actually monitor all this value it is coming here then you can actually put some read. So, after that you if you just put a read equal to 1 you will get the value 1 because you have read first you have written value 1 to the FIFO and so on. So, you can actually see this waveforms to uh, monitor whatever you are reading the value from FIFO exactly the order you are write have written to the FIFO ok. So, uh, this explain how to write test bench for a sequential element. So, I will just give you some coding guidelines uh, to conclude this lecture. So, whenever you are modeling sequential logic use non blocking the non blocking assignments, when you have latches use non blocking assignments, when modeling combinational logic with always block use blocking assignments when modeling both sequential and combinational logic within the same always block use non blocking assignments. Do not mix this blocking and non blocking assignments within the same always block and do not make assignments to the same variable more than one in always block ok. So, with this I conclude the discussion on Verilog modules in coming lectures I am going to take various combinational modules and their implementation in Verilog. Thank you. Thank you.